Hey hello everyone, welcome. In this tutorial, we are gonna UV unwrap and paint this racing car. I know that painting in Cinema 4D is body paint is old, sloppy, and not much responsive. It cannot compete with Substance Painter, but uh, having an alternative, especially if you are working in Cinema 4D, is always a good thing for a 3D artist. So, without further ado, let's start. Alright guys, I will be continuing from where we left. If you haven't watched the first tutorial where I modeled this car, you can watch it. I will put the link in the description. Now, let's check what we have. I'm gonna open up this and I will have some symmetries. So if we want to unwrap the UVs, we need to bake or make these editable. Otherwise, this is what we have right now. So let's check this one. And make this editable. Hit C on your keyboard and take this out of this group. And we have another one. This is from the whole car. Again, hit C on the keyboard and select them all. Select the first one and hold down Shift. Select the last one. This is going to select them all. I'm going to put these under that now so that I can delete this. Now we have. A single null and to the let's rename that to race car and after that point i need to combine some of the objects because i want these to be a single object so they will share the same material which will make it easier for us to texture and paint it while these are selected i will right click and say connect objects and delete this is gonna make a single object and let's solo it. Now I will switch to UV edit layout. First thing first, let's switch to polygon mode. Select them all, control A, and I want a fresh start, so I will hit reset UV. By the way, while we are here. These blue polygons means that they are flipped. So double click on it, right click and say reverse normals. Now I will deselect everything, click anywhere in the viewport. If you have ever watched my UV unwrapping tutorials, you will know that I always start by selecting the hard edges, especially when I work on hard surface models. And today I'm gonna do that. Our mission is gonna be to select all the sharp edges. You can do that manually, of course, like holding shift, selecting this, but it's going to be time consuming. There is a shorter way, like font break selection. First thing, let's deselect everything. Click anywhere in the viewport selection. Make sure that you are in edge mode. By the way, I have reset my UV. To do that, you can select all the polygons in polygon mode and say reset UV. So let's go back to the edge mode selection funk break selection these highlighted blue parts will be selected when i say select all before doing that though i need to make some adjustments because right now these selections don't look very good let's increase that or lower that I will make a quick check. All right, not bad. It's not great. We need to make some adjustments, but for the moment, this is looking enough for me. I will say select all and I will hit E on my keyboard to switch to move tool. Now I will be holding shift and selecting and deselecting some of the edges. Like this one is pointless, this one as well. These ones, these ones, maybe I can add this to my selection. The other side. Select this.
All right, now let's see what we are going to have. I will click on UV unwrap. This is going to unwrap them right now. These are really small. You need to pack them. So let's go to UV picking. Select the geometric one and enable equalize iron size. This is going to scale these UVs based on the real size of the object or you can say the polygons. Hit apply. And this is what we got right now. It is looking good, not bad, but we may need to make some adjustments. Like some of the UV islands are slightly rotated, but this is really easy to fix. Just select an edge and say align UV island. If you see something like similar, do the same thing. Like you can do it right here. Here, for example. Okay, I will pick them one more time so it is not important where you place this. Now I'm gonna work on this part particularly because this is gonna be the most important one when it comes to texturing. Most of the job will be on these pieces so let's first find these uv islands and unwrap them one more time to get a more decent result because if i select this we're gonna see that we have like four uv islands it's gonna absolutely create problems when we texture them especially when we want some patterns on these. So basically, I want to create a single UV island from these selected polygons. And it is going to be real easy. I will just need to make some inclusion to these selections. Like here. I will go to selection, loop selection, hold down shift, select these. And I want to select the polygons Now let's this time use projection. It's going to be much easier. I will change my view to something like that. Like we are looking over the top. Then go to projection and say frontal. Hit E on your keyboard and move it aside. Move the island aside. Right now it is projected. So I will get distortion to relax the UV island. I will go to relax UV and simply hit apply. Perfect. No, we should not have any distortion. Actually, let me show you this in an example. If I enable UV map and check that, see later. But if I hit apply in the relax UV options, check it one more time. No, it is relaxed. And as I told you, this is the most important one. So it is going to be good to have this one have a big space like this. Because this part will be more visible and sometimes it is a good move to make some parts bigger than the older ones, the unimportant ones. For example, this one. Let's see. Yes, this bottom polygons. Let me turn off UV map. You are gonna you are not gonna see that in any case. So there is no point of having this UV island this big. So you can scale it down. And these parts should be okay. And this part okay. I believe this is gonna be enough. Now I will select them all. Control A. I'm gonna pick them one more time. Go to UV picking. This time though. I will uncheck equalize iron size. So they will be packed based on their current sizes. And I can enable preserve orientation because I rotated some of them. Like this one. I want to keep them as they are. Now all I need to do hit apply. Let's do that. And let me uh, uncheck equalize iron size and hit apply perfect 
you know what i should have included this as well so let me quickly make a projection frontal relax apply and it's gonna be good to select this edge and say align your violence select them all Control a and for taking i want to make this bigger select them all Control a uv picking and hit apply perfect now we need to work on something else and it is about polygon count right now we have very low poly mesh and of course it was the point of the video of the tutorial creating a really basic object with the help of the subdivision surface but when you want to texture your objects having a low poly mesh might be a problem because it's going to distort your uvs in the subdivision surface options you're going to see that there is an option for subdividing uvs so subdivision surface is not only subdivides your mesh but it also subdivides the uvs but this creates a problem let me show you this in an example if i create a material for the color i will select checkerboard and assign that to the body right now everything is looking great no distortion at all but when i enable subdivision surface we will start to see big distortions right now because of the boxes are too big you cannot see much but i'm gonna scale the uvs so you can see it better for example this part if i turn on and off the subdivision surface you are gonna see it clearly and this is not much acceptable especially for texturing the objects like for example inside there are a great deal of damage and distortion this happens because of the low density of polygons here and here you can see it it is almost everywhere except the top part so what we should do we should subdivide our object it is that easy so let's press alt and add a subdivision surface only specifically to that object body i want to change my display to wireframe so we can see the polygons and i'm gonna lower it to one otherwise two might be too much so we need to kind of find a balance and most of the time one is okay i will set the white uvs on edge and i will basically make the subdivision surface editable hit c on the keyboard now this is our new object which has more polygons but in exchange we will not get any distortion i mean we can make it very small ones but overall we will not have a problem now let's check the uvs uvs also got subdivided so some of them are intersecting to fix that select them all again uv picking and use the same settings and hit apply perfect now none of them should touch each or not touch but intersect sometimes though based on the project you may need to select boundary or standard uvs before making the subdivision source editable but in this project i will use the edge mode now let's use that same material to see what we got i will apply this and scale it to 25 percent and it's a subdivision surface and alt and select subdivision surface now when i enable subdivision surface on and off you're gonna see that we have less distortion we have some distortions over here but this is not because of the subdivision surface and this amount of distortion is acceptable again this is mostly based on what you are working 
today we are gonna work mostly on the top part so we are okay to have this much distortion but if these distortions create problems you can select them all go to relax uv and relax them let me undo it and see the effect apply and here we go no distortions let's pick them one more time i hope that this is going to be the last one i think we are done with the uvs for this part i will just delete that material and i can delete that solution surface rename that to body one more time now we are good to texture this part before texturing process i will show you what i prepared in photoshop like this one these are a bunch of levels symbols and logos which have transparent backgrounds stack them and save them as psd you can open up psd files in cinema 4d and put the paint easily and the other one is that pattern so you can save this as whatever you want it doesn't need to be psd jpeg png doesn't matter but this one should be in a psd file or i believe tiff files are fine as well now let's go back to the cinema 4d i will switch to paint layout before doing anything let me change my layout we have this texture panel but i will unlock that because i want to lock it over here so i will both have to the view and to the view in order to paint my body i need to enable to the wizard click here i will deselect all i just want to select body object so find that and enable it only say next uncheck recalculate uv because we have our uv already next color is okay but i want to change the texture size to let's say 4k and say finish and close now we can paint our car however we want right here right next to the attributes we have layers just like photoshop and right now we have this base color i want a black car overall so i will change it to black first let's go to colors and set it to black now all i need to do go to here and say fill layer that's all now i want to make some changes on the material to make it a car paint or similar to that open up material manager and open up this material double click on it this is the material we got after the paint setup wizard so basically this check texture you see is in the color slot of this material so whatever i do here will be in that slot in the texture slot of this material in this one i want to change the reflectance to better like ggx change the fresnel to the electric and maybe less roughness like four percent can close that now i will import a texture file and i will say open texture don't say merge texture if you say so it's gonna import that texture into that layer set and in this material we don't want that i just want to import the texture for copying say open texture and select the pattern as you can see you don't see these stars in the 3d view because this texture you see is not a material it is just a texture or material is in here matte one color tiff so let's go back to this one and i will go to texture selection and say texture all then edit copy now i will go to my 
materials texture and it is this one now i will add a new layer and paste that texture over this one Control v actually we don't need to even create an empty layer now let's select the move tool but this is not the same with the 3d move tool it is for moving the layers and it should be somewhere around here let's make it slightly bigger click on that scale it after scaling hold down shift this is gonna keep the aspect ratio of the image i'm gonna switch the move tool it's gonna ask i want to keep it the transform and i will say yes i want this new texture to be only visible on the top parts so i will need kind of a mask to do that let's go to objects select body i will go back to the colors and switch to polygon mode here and basically i want to select this part this u island so double click on it then texture selection say create ma create mask from selection now go to the layer right click and say add layer mask this is that easy but it is not enough i want kind of a fade away effect on this texture so select the mask select your brush it should be in black and make it bigger by clicking on your middle mouse and moving it to the right and i'm gonna paint this like that maybe we can lower the opacity to something like 50 To increase the fade away effect, I'm gonna lower it to like 5% and paint on this. By the way, you can do this in TD view as well. Okay, I am happy with this. Now we can start to add the levels. Now let's import that PST file and see what we can do. First, as I did before, file, open texture. I'm gonna select that PST file. Never mind the UVs, they are not important. If I go to layers, just like in Photoshop, I should get these layers and for the first one i'm gonna select this 07 one select this layer right click and say selection from layer then edit copy now i will go back to my materials texture matte one color and i'm gonna paste it over simple hit ctrl v and i'm gonna move it over here You can make this one smaller scale it then hold down shift to keep the aspect ratio of the layer and you can select this one it's gonna ask me if i want to keep the transform yes now i'm gonna make a duplicate of this one duplicate layer and so let's move it over here this one I am gonna make this smaller again scale then hold down shift something like that should be enough now let's do something different before that uh, let me transform this and merge this layer down and I'm gonna rename that to numbers first 
this one is pattern star this background no i'm gonna create a new layer and enable projection with a good view like so then i will press ctrl v and i will scale this down just like i did before perfect as you can see it, it, it projected that layer based on my view so you don't need to always move the layer in the to-do view find a good view and hit ctrl v and scale it and put a number on the back ctrl v yeah also you can make uh, interesting patterns like testing this yeah something like that but for the moment i just want numbers and let's get out of projection mode click on that pencil i'm gonna rename these two sides numbers and let's go back to the labels psd file and try to copy more labels like we can copy this one again select layer texture selection selection from layer edit copy or you can simply use ctrl c i will go back to my materials texture mat one color and i'm gonna simply paste it over ctrl v and let's move it over here scale it hold down shift to keep the aspect ratio of the layer perfect select another layer and say yes i will go back to labels this time let's select this red one select the layer texture selection selection from layer edit copy go back to the materials texture and paste it over move it down then scale You can also get interesting results by playing with the blending mode for example let's select this number first layer and i'm gonna change it to let's say difference now let's make something very different first i will switch to polygon mode i will make a group selection selection group selection select this then i want to create an empty layer new layer and i'm gonna rename that to paint layer and basically i want to fill that layer with any color uh, sorry fill polygons so that i can get a selection from this layer right click and say selection from layer I will turn that off and I can delete it. Create a new one. You can't see it, but I have a selection right now. 
Yes, if I switch the move tool, you can see the selection. But I want to modify this selection first. Let's shrink that like 20 radius. Then I will go back to selection and give some feather like 10. Hit OK. Actually, let's make it 5. Hit OK. Now I will go to the colors and I'm gonna select something like that. Then while we have this selection, I will go to this layer and say fill layer. Now I can't say that deselect all. You can still make different stuff like difference. Now I will use the same technique and get another stripe. You know what? I don't like blending mode at all, so I am going to back to normal. And I'm going to put this layer below the labels so we can see them. Maybe we can create a layer mask, brush, make sure that it's on black. Yes. And I'm going to paint on here. So it's going to kind of fade away the stripes but for doing that in the attributes of the opacity of the brush i'm gonna lower it to like 25 i believe this is gonna be enough for the body now let's try to work on the tires first i'm gonna switch to standard mode unite everything press e now let's find the wheels or tires. As you can see, we have a bunch of them, but we can only texture one of them and duplicate it, which will be much easier and time saver. So first thing, let's delete this. Then since we make the cement editable, we have this one. So I will switch to polygon mode, double click on this one and delete. I will go back to model mode, solo it and switch to UV edit mode. Let's make a clean start. I will switch back to polygon mode, select all of them, control A and reset them. As I did before, I will switch to edge mode. Let's deselect everything and I'm going to select sharp edges. Hold down shift and select these edges. This time though, since we are working on cylindrical object, we need to select seams like these ones. Most of the time you want these to be on the places where you won't see much, like this. This is the bottom part. Now these ones. I'm gonna not I'm not gonna select these because if you select these polygons, these are not a cylindrical shape. It is a kind of disc, so we can skip these, but these ones I need to select. Same here and here. Now, all I need to do hit UV and wrap. Click on that. Let's select them all and pack them. Uh, for the first time, I will enable equalize island size. And this is what I have right now. These ones are looking nice. Let's see. Yes, this is also okay. Maybe we can select this edge and align the UV islands. Then this one. We can use UV rectangularize for this one. Perfect. This one. I thought I didn't select any seam for this one, but can make projection for it from the right view projection frontal with a side 
than this one. This one is going to be important. So for the moment, I'm going to put it aside and check this. Okay, this one. Again, I can use UV rectangle rise for it. This one again. Okay, let's select them all and pick them one more time. Now I want to specifically work on this one because most of the job will be on this part. I'm going to put levels on this one and I want something more straight or under legs to avoid any distortion. I will go back to the right view. Again, I will make a frontal projection. As I did in the uh, body, I will make some parts of the UVs bigger than the other ones. And these ones will be the UVs which will have textures on them. Like this one and this one. So, select this, double click, hold and shift, select the other ones and invert the selection. And move them aside. Let's place them first. And I'm going to make these big as much as I can fit inside my UV editor. And this one as well. Now I'm going to select them all because I need to pack them as well. You can do this manually, of course, but I'm going to use UV packing one more time. I will untick equalize item size because I have scaled this so we don't want to scale them back hit apply and this is looking nice we can gain more space like scaling this a bit but I'm gonna skip that this is gonna be enough for us right now now I will switch back to paint mode and open up but the paint to the paint wizard one more time to select all this time i'm gonna only select wheel say next and check we calculate uv because we already have that next for the texture i'm gonna make it 2k as i did before i'm gonna unlock this one and lock it over here let's open up the layers again this is gonna have a black base so first let's check the color yes it is on black then i will go to here and say fill layer and open up my new material again i will add a ggx the electric this time though since this is a rubber material i will give some roughness now i will go back to the labels pst file and let's copy this one Again, selection from layer, edit, copy, and I will go to the mat to color, control V, and let's move it over here, scale it. All right, looks good. I'm going to duplicate this one and put it over here. Now I will create a new layer. And in this layer, I will select draw polygon shape. And let's try to get a center point and make the circle bigger. Uh, we should set our color to white before doing that. I'm gonna do that one more time. Let's make something like that. Of course, it is not in the center. So let's select move tool, move layer tool. And make something like that then we will need a mask right click add layer mask to mask it we need to change our color to black select the mask and draw another circle just like that i will switch back to move layer tool and move this new circle somewhere around here all right not bad then i will select rectangle selection because we want these logos to be seen and select mask 
Don't hear. Same thing on here. Layer. This is gonna be enough for the tires. Uh, but before doing anything, let's see what we are gonna get when I sell the bite. Okay, not bad. No distortion at all because of the. Let's see. This part is projected. It's perfectly flat, so there is less chance to be distorted. I will add one more thing to this texture. Let's go to File, Open Texture. I will import this one. Then Texture Selection, select All, Edit, Copy, go back to the tires material and make sure that you don't select the mask. Just select Layer, then Control V. This is probably way bigger than our texture size, so select this and scale texture. Then click on another layer and accept the scale. Now I'm going to right click at the layer mask, select brush. I believe it was on 25, yes. And basically, I will paint this. Like, I don't want this dirt on the sides. So, first click on here, then hold down Shift and click here. This is very similar to the Photoshop, same here. Let's enable subdivision surface. Yeah, you can do something like that to give more randomness. Or if you have brushes, you can use them like grunge brushes. But for the moment, this is going to be enough for me. You should always watch the seams. Okay, let's go back to layers and we can lower this. Now, I believe I am done with the texture of the tire, so we can go to File, save the texture as, like, JPEG, PNG, PSD, whatever you like, or these textures which you created with the body paint will be saved where you saved your file, the Cinema 4D file, so it's up to you. Now, I will go back to the standard mode, let's select the wheel. Model mode, and I will make a duplicate. Hold down Control, move it, then rotate it. Uh, if I don't know if you noticed, but when I exit the body paint by switching the model mode, the texture resolution has dropped down. You can click the material, go to viewport, and set it to OK. Now we should get the full resolution. Select that. Hold down Control. Duplicate. Move it over here. Scale it. One more time. can rotate this to give some randomness. Also, if you are not going to animate any of the tires, you can select them, right click, say connect objects and delete. Since they have the same UVs, the texture will work on them perfectly. Now let's make quick materials for these mechanisms for the wheels. Turn off subdivision surface. Select all of them. Hold and shift. We can make this a single object. Right click, connect objects, and delete. I'm gonna call it Mac, and 
we don't need to unwrap this i will just create a material color select this do not this one carbon fiber one reflectance not this one we want tgx electric then assign that to mac we didn't unwrap that but we can use quick projection let's enable subdivision surface and let's make another one for the seat and steering wheel let's make it darker color again a ggx electric and a rough material assign that to the seat and steering wheel by the way i hit that layer let me open that up all right guys that was it i hope you learned something new i am aware that uh, the body paint is not that good i mean it is sloppy old and not much responsive as i said at the beginning having an alternative is always a good thing so anyway i hope that you learned something new about uvs and texturing and i will see you in the next stories take care and bye